Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. Today I want to speak to you about saying sorry. It's something that we do automatically, a little bit like when somebody asks how we are, we say fine. We don't give it a lot of thought, um, there's not a lot of meaning behind it, it's an automatic response to a situation. And normally a situation that we have not been our best self in. It can range from letting someone down for an appointment or hurting one of those people we love. It can be anything, you know, that we feel has stepped out of who we want to be. And the reason that I've titled this particular episode, Sorry is Not Enough, is that when our automatic response is sorry, it leaves a lot to be desired because it doesn't make the situation right and it doesn't, it doesn't honour the person who we've hurt inadvertently or actually on purpose, whichever way we've done it, um, that we're speaking to. For instance, if I'm late to an appointment with a friend and I rush in and I say, oh, I'm so sorry, um, I had a flat tyre or um, somebody called just as I was leaving or I had an important email and I've got so much work and whatever it happens to be that is my excuse for not showing up on time. It doesn't change the fact that I valued whatever was going on in my life more than I valued being where I intended to be. There are accidents, obviously, like when you have a flat tire or if something unexpected turns up. But quite often, when we're saying sorry, it's for things that we haven't prioritised, things that we haven't made important as whatever else it was we were doing in our lives. And even if we don't say that while we're saying sorry, the person who's receiving the sorry can still feel it. I'd like to put to you that there's another way for us to deal with infractions in how we want to show up in life. And that's to really honour the person who we've inadvertently let down, hurt, um, disrespected, um, made second best, whatever it is that we've done that we've hurt another in. And that is, first of all, to apologise truly. Instead of just rushing in and saying sorry and making lots of excuses, it's actually to ask for their forgiveness and to wait for that person to say yes or no. Once you've sought that person's forgiveness, the second step in the process is to ask if there's anything you can do to make up for the damages caused. And by all means, use your own language. And then the third step in the process is to actually yourself make a promise to behave differently in the future. And I'll put a link to another episode I did about integrity, because the promise is not an empty promise. It's a promise you intend to keep, a promise to change your behaviour in a way so that you don't keep making the same mistake over and over again. Um, I've got a friend who's incredibly dear to me and I love her to distraction, but she is always an hour late, virtually to the dot. And as much as I love her, for a while it really hurt. And exactly what I was saying earlier about feeling like you weren't a priority is how I felt. And she didn't do it just to me, it wasn't just a personal thing, it happened to everybody. Um, in her instance, um, I've just chosen to always show up on time because that's what I've made as a commitment to myself. Um, but I take a book or I take something along because I know that she won't be there on time. But something I noticed before I came to this decision and how I was going to handle it was that my retaliation was to try and either tell her that the time was a different time, to tell her that we were meant to be meeting an hour before I'd actually chosen to meet so that she would get there on time, or to be the one that's late and be even later than she is. So quite often when somebody does something consistently that we feel is disrespectful or hurtful or upsetting, it triggers a response in us to hurt the person who we, who we assume has hurt us. And I'm sharing this because from that perspective, we're looking at how things are done to us. But the same is true of the way that we behave towards other people. So if we continually disrespect people or hurt people, they're going to retaliate in a way that causes us pain. And what I'm sharing with you here is how we show up affects those around us. It affects our lives, it affects how we experience people, how people experience us, and it affects all the possibilities that are open to us in life. So for me, it's incredibly important to honour those that I spend my time with, the people I love, the people I care about, 
and my connections and the people that I do work with. I can't say that I'm always, I always get it 100%. Quite often when I use a three-step process that I've talked about, um, people don't often really want me to do anything to make up for whatever it is that I perceive that I've done wrong. But I think for me, the most important part of that three-step process is the promise, whether it's actually given verbally or whether it's a decision I make myself to change what I'm doing that might have caused hurt or offence to somebody else so that I know that I'm living in alignment with myself as much as possible. And that although you can't not hurt people because of the way people are designed, sometimes they take offence and get hurt by actions that have no intention to do so. But if I know that I've inadvertently done something that has disrespected somebody and isn't in align with my values and who I choose to show up as, then I will always make a commitment to myself to change the behaviour in myself so that I, I show up in a way that I want to, that honours who I want to be and that is in alignment with my values. I hope you've enjoyed this week's little episode. Um, if you want to learn more about me or if you are interested in any of my online courses or my coaching, you can find the links to those below in the show notes. Otherwise, please like um, this episode or subscribe to my channel and I will see you again next week. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.